Welcome to Hydros. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your X10 to do alkalinity testing. Here's what you will need to get started. A Hydros Collective with three available dosing pumps, one orange drive port, and one probe port. A Hydros IV drive port accessory, a pH probe with pH 4.01, 7.01, and 10.01 calibration fluids and alkalinity testing reagent ready to use. To ensure proper installation, place the IV within a three foot radius of the X10 controller on a flat surface. Alternatively, you may attach the IV to a vertical surface using screws, which are not provided. Ensure that the IV testing vessel assembly is perfectly level. Insert the magnetic mixing pill into the glass beaker and Place the glass beaker into the IV testing vessel assembly, ensuring the spout faces outward. Connect the X10's doser 3, the green one, using the included silicon line. Attach one end to the dosing pump's input. And secure the other to the reagent container. Ensure the container is within 3 feet and trim the line accordingly. Connect another section of the same color line to the dosing pump output. Attach the other end to the short rigid acrylic tube, the shortest one included with the three. Carefully insert the rigid acrylic tubing into the tube holder 1 at the back top of the IV. Ensure the tube is firmly pushed down without touching the testing vessel's bottom. The reagent line tip must be at least 1 inch away from the bottom and completely submerged during and after tests. Connect the extends doser, the red one using the included silicone line. Attach one end to the dosing pump's back input and secure the other to a nearby drain. To continue, connect another section of the line in the same color to the front of the dosing pump output. Then, attach one of the two rigid acrylic tubes that came with your IV. Insert the rigid acrylic tube into the tube holder number 3 at the top back of the IV, ensuring the hard tube is pushed down to the bottom of the testing vessel. Connect the X10 doser 1, the yellow one, using the included silicone line. Attach one end to the dosing pump input and secure the other end to the side of your aquarium's sump. It's critical to ensure the line is always fully submerged in water. To continue, connect another section of the line in the same color to the dosing pump output and attach one of the rigid acrylic tubes that came with your IV. Insert the rigid acrylic tube into the tube holder number 2 at the top back of the IV, ensuring the rigid acrylic tube is pushed down to the bottom of the testing vessel. Using the included probe o-ring, insert the pH probe into the IV probe holder number 1. Ensure the probe tip is at least one quarter of an inch from the bottom of the testing vessel. Repeat the same process with the conductivity probe. Connect the IV motor to an available orange drive port. From the status screen on your Hydros app, tap on the three horizontal dots to the right of the output's label and select Add Edit Output. Tap on the plus symbol at the bottom right of the page. Type in the name of your new output and then tap on create. Type IV. Reagent doser. Select the create new doser. The suggested output name IV reagent is already filled in. If you want to change it, you can do so before tapping the create button. Type smart doser. Output device. 
select the control extend doser number three, the green one. Default flow rate, three milliliters per minute. Notify when reservoir level below. Choose the desired volume level for hydrants to alert you when the, the container falls below it. Notification level. Choose the type of notification to receive when the reagent container falls below the minimum level. Calibrate doser. For now, let's skip that step. It's best to calibrate at the end. At this time, do not hit upload changes. Instead, tap on the arrow on the upper left-hand corner. Drain doser. Select create new doser. The suggested output name, IV drain, is already filled in. If you want to change it, you can do so before tapping the Create button. Type Smart Doser. Output Device. Select the Control Extend Doser number 2, the red one. Default Flow Rate. Negative 100 milliliters per minute. Remember, this pump runs by default in reverse. Notify when reservoir level below. Choose the desired volume level for hydros to alert you when the container exceeds it. If the line returns to the sump or drain, leave the level as zero. Notification level. If the notification when reservoir level below is greater than zero, choose the type of notification to receive when the reagent container exceeds the maximum level. Calibrate doser. As before, let's skip this step for now. It's best to calibrate at the end. Tap on the arrow on the upper left-hand corner. Fill doser. Select Create New Doser. The suggested output name, IV Fill, is already filled in. If you want to change it, you can do so before tapping the Create button. Type Smart Doser. Output Device, select the Control Extend Doser number 1, the yellow one. Default Flow Rate, 100 milliliters per minute. Notify when reservoir level below. Leave this set to zero. Calibrate Doser. As before, Let's skip this step. It's best to calibrate at the end. Tap on the arrow on the upper left-hand corner. Stir output device. You can specify the orange drive port where you connected the IV motor. Stir power safe range. It allows you to specify a power use range considered acceptable. If power consumption is outside the range, a notification will trigger if selected. Here's a tip. The IV steering motor uses around 2 watts of power. Steerer power notification level. Choose the notification level triggered when the power consumption falls outside the safe range for the steerer power. IV pH input. Select create new pH input. The suggested output name IV pH input is already filled in. If you want to change it, you can do so before tapping the create button. Type probe port. Probe mode, pH. Probe port, select the probe port where you physically connected the pH probe. Safe range, the default is 3.5 to 13. Graph limits, the default is 3.5 to 13. Temperature input, this allows you to select a temperature probe to help make the pH reading more accurate. Offset, Use this option to do minor corrections to the pH reading if the reading is slightly off after running a full pH calibration. The maximum offset allowed is negative 0.5 to 0.5. Please recalibrate or replace the probe if the discrepancy exceeds the offset range. Calibration. Always calibrate with solution 7.01 first. Rinse the probe in RODI water and gently tap it dry with a paper towel. Place the probe into the 7.01 calibration solution and swirl it around to ensure no air bubbles are trapped inside the probe's tip. Tap the recalibrate button on the app and wait for 2 minutes. After the 2 minutes have passed and the value has stabilized, press accept. Repeat the same process for 4.01 calibration fluid as well as 10.01 calibration fluid if available. Notification level. This option lets you specify the notification level you want to receive. You will receive a notification when the pH is outside the safe range or the control has lost the connection to the sensor. Tap on the arrow on the upper left-hand corner. Alkalinity repeat test threshold. 
If there's a significant discrepancy between the current test result and the previous one, Hydros can initiate a new test to confirm the accuracy of the result. You can choose the degree of difference that triggers an automatic verification test. If a verification test is necessary, Hydros will disregard the initial test result. Alkalinity Test Method Here you select the alkalinity titration method endpoint you prefer. If you're not familiar with the different methods, don't worry about it. We've selected the most common. But if you'd like to learn more, visit the website below. Salinity Input Let's create a new salinity input. The suggested input name, IV Salinity, is already filled in. If you want to change it, you can do so before tapping the Create button. Type Salinity Port. Probe Port. Select the port number where you physically connected the conductivity probe. Probe K. Select your conductivity probe's K value. If you don't know it, it's printed in the box. After defining the K value, you must upload the changes at this configuration point. It will increase the accuracy of the calibration process below. Safe range. The default is 3.5 to 13. Graph value limit. The default is 3.5 to 13. Temperature input. Select a temperature probe to help make the salinity reading more accurate. Offset. If the salinity reading is slightly off after completing a full probe calibration, use this option to make minor corrections. Keep in mind that the maximum offset allowed is plus or minus 0 0.002. If the discrepancy exceeds this range, recalibrate or replace the probe. Before calibrating the conductivity probe, allow the two calibration liquid containers to sit in the tank sump for at least 10 minutes to equalize to the same temperature. Temperature has a significant impact on conductivity readings and calibration. Place the probe into the 35 PPT calibration solution and swirl it around to ensure no air bubbles are trapped inside the probe's tip. Tap the recalibrate button on the app and wait for two minutes. After the two minutes have passed and the value has stabilized, press accept. Rinse the probe with RODI water and carefully dry it. Place the probe into the 28 PPT calibration solution and swirl it around to ensure no air bubbles are trapped inside the probe's tip. Tap the recalibrate button on the app and wait for two minutes. After the two minutes have passed and the value has stabilized, press Accept. Notification Level Specify the notification level you want to receive. You will receive notifications when the reading is outside the safe range or the controller has lost the connection to the sensor. Is Invisible If you choose to hide the input from the status screen, it will only become visible on pages that have Show Invisible selected. By default, this output is invisible. At this time, do not hit Upload Changes. Instead, tap on the arrow on the upper left-hand corner. Now you can upload your changes. Once you upload the changes, Hydros will automatically add the following inputs and outputs to your status screen. An IV tester, drain doser, fill doser, and reagent doser outputs. An alkalinity, a sample salinity, and a sample pH input. And it will also add a pH probe and salinity probe in visible input. Please keep in mind that IV alkalinity, IV sampled pH, and IV sample salinity will not update until you run a test. Now we must prime the dosing pumps. Place the output line of your dose in a container or drain. On the status screen, tap on the doser output tile or text to view the output pop-up options from the status screen. To the right of the manual dose button, enter the one-time total volume you would like to administer. It could be 10, 15, 20 milliliters, depending on the length of your line. Tap on manual dose to start the Hydros app will show you a running volume at the top of the output pop-up window. 
Repeat this process until all air has been purged from the line. Repeat this process for all three dosing pumps. Now it's time to prime the dosers. Insert the prime doser output line into the measuring or calibrated beaker. Using the same pop-up on the status screen, tap on the calibrate button and then hit continue. It will trigger the hydros to run the doser for exactly one minute. Remove the line from the beaker and read the volume inside. Enter this volume on the Hydros app. You must upload after calibrating. Repeat this process for each of the dosing pumps and don't forget to upload after each calibration. Now you must establish a test regimen schedule for Hydros to perform alkalinity tests. From the status screen, tap on the upper left hand corner and select schedules. Tap the plus symbol at the bottom right and enter your schedule's name. Tap create. Type test regimen. Tester, select the output name. Start time. This specifies the start time of the day's first test. In this case, we'll leave it at zero for midnight. Run count. In 24 hours, how many times would you like Hydros to perform testing? For now, we're gonna leave it at zero. Run interval. What is your preferred waiting period for hydros between the start of each test? Since we want to test every four hours, let's set that to four. Active in modes. Select the modes you want to test when automatically trigger. We want to make sure that normal is selected. Run every nth day. With this feature, you can initiate this testing schedule at intervals of X number of days. What that means is if I want to test every two days, I select two. If I want to test every 10 days, I set the number to 10. Let's leave it as one. Run on days of the week. With this feature, you can choose the specific days of the week when you want the test schedule to trigger. A blue circle indicates an active day. Depends on. You can turn the schedule on and off depending on the status of another output. Now you can upload your changes. Since your schedule is set to test every four hours, your Hydros X10 will give you alkalinity result, one sampled pH, and one sample salinity reading. Then it'll update again four hours later when a new test runs. But every now and then, you will want to do an unscheduled alkalinity test. To do that, go to the output section from the status screen and tap on your IV tester output. On the pop-up, tap on manual test. Before you start testing alkalinity with your X10, there are three important things that we must keep in mind. Firstly, it may take three to five tests for your X10 to provide you with stable alkalinity readings. During this break-in period, the test may fluctuate a bit due to the doser lines needing time to settle down. However, if you give it some time, it will eventually stabilize. Secondly, the pH probe may take up to a week to break in and settle down, which can also result in fluctuating readings. You may need to calibrate the probe multiple times during this period, but this is normal and will only last about a week. Lastly, the conductivity probe may take up to three to four weeks to break in and settle due to the inert oils from the manufacturer that can trap air bubbles and skew test results. Salt water would wash these oils during the break-in period, and like the pH probe, you may need to calibrate it multiple times. Well, that concludes our video for today. To discover more about the Hydros controller and its various features, please visit CoralViewHydros.com. If you need assistance, contact our support portal at support.coralview.com. Our team is ready to help you with any questions or issues. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with our newest product reviews and tutorial videos. Additionally, you can follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Coralview Aquarium Products. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.